For a country that boasts of agriculture being the backbone of her economy and contributing 25% to the national GDP, little has been done by the government to improve fortunes in the sector. According to a new report released by the World Bank, though some subsectors within agriculture and manufacturing such as horticulture and food production have prospered, agriculture's contribution to the GDP has reduced from 26.6% in 2006 to 22% in 2014 with the government's intervention through inhibitive policies to blame. External environments, so the high cost of labor, land. Uh, we discussed in the report that uh, in Kenya, formal sector wages are actually four times higher than Bangladesh. Okay, so just think of it. So it's really difficult for formal sector to employ uh, people expecting high productivity if their wages are so high. Though expansion in modern services such as financial intermediation and mobile communication needs to credit for the tremendous growth in the services sector, it has emerged that Kenya is not a hotbed of innovation, with only a quarter of Kenyan farms spending on in-house innovations. In global terms, by global standards, Kenya's innovation is less impressive because it's constrained by incrementalism. So very few firms are actually putting out products that are actually new to the domestic market. The last big innovation, as we heard, was M-Pesa, and how long back was there? Eight, eight years back, right? So what's the next big innovation here? Difficult to say. Uh, it's constrained by smallness. So very few firms, only one in the four firms we surveyed, actually carried out research and development in our R&D. So despite of what we talk about Kenya being a quote-unquote hotbed of innovation, the evidence and data point us otherwise. A cultural change has also been witnessed in the country. Over the time with the financial savings in the country being at an all-time low, hence calling for reformation in the savings and pension systems. Public savings in Kenya are low because you have a high recurrent wage bill and not enough tax revenues. So you're spending much, in terms of the government, is spending much more than it actually takes in, and that reduces public savings. Private savings are low because of, uh, as I mentioned, because real deposit interest rates have, all, have been not just low, but they've been negative over the last decade. So households are not incentivized to save. So contrary to what some may say, well, it's in Kenya's culture and this and that, as an economist, I think it's a more a question of incentives. Reduce the deposit lending spreads, make it worth it for people like you and me to put money in the bank so we earn an interest, and I'm sure we'll see a turnaround in savings. Nicholas Nduati, Nizawa Business.